Aria, I got a solution for cyborg data type sizes in C++. Here I got a bare bones program. I, I got a, I in, here I've included the IO stream. I'm using the namespace STD. Here's the end main function with the return zero to terminate the, terminate the function or the program. And then here I have some comments. I have the input, the process, and the output. So it, when, you're, when I'm breaking down a, pro, a programming challenge, looking for a solution, I know for sure that I need some input. I need to process or calculate. That's an, another way you can think of that. And then I need an output. So here I don't necessarily receive input from the user, but I'm giving it to me from the challenge itself so some the information is given to me so that i'll consider that the input later on when the user gives you information you consider that the input so in this case i have a few variables i have a char i'm going to call it letter so i'm i'm just going to declare it i'm not going to initialize it when i when i declare it when i initialize it i set it equal to an actual value like that but it's not i'm not going to initialize it i'm just going to to declare it here i have another integer another variable called it's an integer it's called number and i got another variable called float and the name of it is decimal and then i have another variable called double and that is called another decimal all right so f these are both decimals this one is a float it's just a smaller chunk of memory as opposed to the double which is a lot bigger and you'll see here whenever i output the information okay so the the, the process the process portion is is actually going to be part of the output so i'm just going to uh, put the uh, group these two together and so here I'm going to output some information to the user. I'm going to basically going to show them how big these these chunks of memory are, the, you know, the data or the data type that there are. So if you ever go into a program and you're trying to debug and you're trying to figure out what type of, you know, you see this variable in memory and you're like, what kind of, you know, variable is that? It, it, it'll show you if you output that information. So, for instance, if I say a char uses... And then here I'm gonna I'm gonna put the process portion and and say size of and then I'll put the the variable name in there, right? Uh, hold on real quick. So after that I'm gonna put uh, bytes b y t e s or byte or bytes, just like that. Okay, so that's basically, so here's the process. It's, it's basically just doing some information for me here. I mean, I could put it right here and, and, and declare it at another, another variable, but I'm not going to do that I'm just, for the sake of time. And I guess kind of ease, I'm going to put, group these two together. So here's the process portion of it inside of an output statement or a cout statement. So the char uses this many bytes. So scratch what I was saying about, you know, trying to figure out what type it is. It might display, let me see. It, it might display the type of variable it is. I'm not sure at this point. I can't remember. But let me, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, show the input, the int variable. Let's see what type of, uh, what size or how many bytes that the this int variable uses. And it's called number. All right, so yeah, and and you you guys will see this whenever I output it to the console. So I'm gonna let me copy this, paste it here, paste it here. So here's going to be a float, and it's gonna be the decimal variable, and then this one is gonna be decimal, and it's gonna be the another decimal variable that was that was created right here all right so i see what the program is doing it's it's basically we're we're outputting the the size of the uh, whatever variable this is the size of it in bytes okay so next thing i need to do is go to a terminal so i go here to the explorer i right click on the file that i'm on open integrated terminal so there's my here's my directory or my folder that the program 
triple zero dot cpp is in and this is the triple zero dot cpp is the file that i have all this information in another way to check to see if the file is in that directory hit ls list and it basically shows you all the files that are in there so the one i'm looking for is this one right here next thing i need to do is compile the program i'll say c plus plus triple zero dot cpp which is the file name at this point if there's errors it will show you errors there's no errors so i'm going to do dot forward slash dot a dot out and it's going to output the information to the user all right so here it is so a char variable which is this variable here it's it's right here and, you know this is the process portion of it look at that if you highlight it it tells you you unsigned long unsigned long for ul interesting okay so so a char uses one byte and an integer uses four a float uses four and a decimal uses eight 